Kensington Mine is located about 45 miles north of Juneau. It's a remote campsite. The only way to get to the mine is by boat or by air. The mine is located in the historic Burners Bay Mining District. So mining here has been going on for over 100 years. We're the latest installment starting production in 2010. In 2016, when we went to see Sandvik's booth at Mine Expo, the idea of removing the miner from the drift and using automation to control an underground LHD was very exciting to us. So we, we started down the path of implementation and being able to move that material and really have no human machine interaction has just been fantastic. It's really kind of changed the way that we think about how we remote stopes and how we muff material. We're recognizing big productivity gains. We're using the automation to mine during shift change. And so during that time period, we're able to continue to mine and use time that wasn't productive to become productive and boost our tonnage rates. When we initially started looking at automation, the primary objective was the safety benefit. Production was a secondary consideration, and we hoped that there would be a production benefit, especially as our initial inception of this program was strictly to be used during that time period when the muckers would have been idle underground anyway. We anticipated the ability to be able to move those tons, which would then, at the beginning of shift, allow the operators to move on to other activities that need to be done. So in many ways, we were getting two birds for the price of one in that we were able to move tons and free up those man hours to do other work that needed to be done without needing to acquire additional manpower. In a three hour smoke out shift we can move 42 buckets down an ore pass. That represents 42 buckets that didn't need to happen during regular operations. So that KPI kind of led to this freeing up of resources around the loader to shift elsewhere where they were needed. Once the mine ops group saw that it was reliable and able to produce these tons when no other activity was going on underground. That's when people really started to get the vision of why we were doing this. Now folks are like, hey, you know, this is working, this is good. What else can we do with this? We know it's going to work, we know it's going to work well, and we know it's going to result in a direct improvement to production. When we implemented AutoMine here, we were trying to shoehorn the automation system into our existing mining infrastructure, which was never intended to have automation in it when it was designed. And so as we proved up that it does work, albeit with some challenges in existing mine workings, as we move into this new mining zone to the east of Kensington, we designed it from the beginning with the intent that we wanted to AutoMine in there as much as we possibly could. We designed our Oregon Waste Passes such that we had enough clearances that we would be able to mine even during shift by establishing barricades and warnings so that we could keep people out of areas and have the automated equipment running there as much as possible, perhaps all the time. And we would be able to optimize when and where and how we could use this and we could spread it across multiple areas. We've done the design work to incorporate the aspects of automation that'll make it more intelligent design and it'll make it more cost efficient. And so we're really excited about that opportunity, not only from a loading standpoint, but potentially from a haulage standpoint and advancing the concepts of automation in this new mine. The fantastic thing about that is that Using automation and using those efficiencies, being able to mine during shift change and being able to mine smartly and control maybe multiple machines can lower our cost structure and allow us to take material that may have been marginal before and allow us to lower our cutoff grade and potentially pull that material into the mine plant.